A wide range of monsters inhabit the land of Oyar, and most take their names from different real-world cultures. Let's start by going through the monster families alphabetically. This will cover the real-world inspirations. The in-world explanation is the Synergy Stones during the Age of Alchemy, and following the Mount Aleph eruption, has mutated many of the people and animals of the world. Hence, some of the cattle will transform into bullmen, or bats will grow scorpion tails. These are identical looking enemies who changed their name and abilities when alchemy was unleashed. All of these monsters are skulls floating in a colored aura. They start as Willhead, Deathhead, and Will-O-Wisp. Will-O-Wisps were spooky glowing lights that floated over swamps ominously and drew curious cats to their doom in the swamp. At the time, the consensus was these lights were ghosts floating over the marshes because they weren't permitted to heaven or hell, or it perished in the swamp. In reality, these are simple chemical reactions that produced floating luminaries when in the dark. Some cultures even assumed the Will-O-Wisps had faces inside of them. After alchemy, they changed their names to reference their respective colors in Japan, and in the West, their abilities, becoming Curse, Haunt, and Shield Skull. The Grave Eclipse transformed remaining skulls into Dark and Whisper Skulls, or in Japan, Evil Skull. There is also another family featuring Will-O-Wisp and resembling floating fireballs with a jack o lantern face, which is sometimes another name for Will-O-Wisp. The second in this family is Devil-Wisp or Devil-Fire, referencing the fact it is less light and more fire. The third is Shadow-Wisp, which appears during the Grave Eclipse. The final is Death-Wisp, also appearing as a Grave Eclipse mutation. Animated skeletons have been around for so long, there is no clear origin. Likely it stemmed from having come from something that had been alive and the uncertainty of darkness and the human presumption of an afterlife. The second member, Bone Fighter, refers to the fact skeletons are made up of bones, so it's a bony fighter. Skull Warrior fits for this type of enemy since the skull protects the mind and face. Basically a natural helmet. Dark Soldier and Cursed Soldier. The two Grave Eclipse monsters make sense since the Grave Eclipse fires evil energy onto the continent where lots of people have died. These must have been soldiers who died and have returned to fight again. These look like spiky blobs with arms. They came with three adjectives, gloom, shade, and foul. The name Scorpion is similar to the names of a family of fish known as scorpionfish. These fish are spiky and venomous, but I don't see arms. A fish would fit considering they have mercury-based attacks though. These guys look like living rocks. No, these guys literally look like living rocks, which is actually a plant related to a cactus. But instead of being spiny, it disguises itself as a spiky rock and produces nasty toxins. Fairly likely upon wanting a rock monster, they chose to model its appearance after the real living rock. In Japan, it's called a running rock. The second member is Boulder Beast, or Bomber Rock in Japan. The third is called Raging Rock, or Dynamite Rock. This refers to the fact it explodes, which rocks actually do explode. Often enough naturally for people to observe a rock spontaneously exploding and declare it the apocalypse, but not enough to motivate us to build floating cities to be protected from nature's pop rocks. Rocks explode for many reasons, most of which have to do with the air or water pressure trapped inside a rock and heat, or collections of flammable materials trapped on and within the rock. Depending on variables, rocks can either pop and crumble or explode much more violently. Because of this, non-porous rocks almost never explode, no matter how hard you try. Thieves are people who steal. In Japan, the thief is called Snatcher, likely referring to pickpockets and purse snatchers who reach into pockets or quickly grab wallets and purses and split. The second member is Bandit or Thief Master. A bandit is generally someone who is part of a heist group that steals things for a living. Similarly, a thief wouldn't be considered a master of his trade if he didn't consistently demonstrate his ability to discount things to free, would he? A brigand is very similar to a bandit but brigands tend to prey in mountains and forests, and are more militarized and prepared to take lives as well as money. In Japan, despite making no sense, this is a simple thief, who is more advanced than a master thief. However, it may have been a mistake for bandits and brigands to exist since they share the same sprite. These are spiky frog and lizard-like beasts. It's safe to assume these were frogs and toads evolved by synergy stones. The first is Todonpa, or in Japan, Garanpa. In Japan, it combines the frog's owner's name with the word for ribbit. Here it combines the owner's name with Toad. The second member is Poison Toad. 
and a number of frogs and toads are very toxic. The final member is Devil Frog, the name of an ancient frog called Beels Bufo, after Beelzebub, the name of a demon in some corners of Christian mythology, the Devil, meaning Lord of the Flies. Yes, science made that subtle joke. If you didn't get it, it's a giant frog named after the Lord of Flies. But scientists think it would have actually eaten smaller baby dinosaurs. These guys are a reference to the frilled dragon, the lizard with the neck flaps. The first member even looks close to the real one. The second member is Storm Lizard, or in Japan, Flap Lizard, because it has neck flaps. Imagine those flowing in 3D. The final is Tempest Lizard, or Gust Lizard, Tempest meaning a violent storm. Okay, let's not make this too long. Trolls originated from Norse mythology as basically people or magical spirits who like to live remotely in caves. Tolkien made his trolls large, deformed brutes hewn from rock, and filled with an orc soul, and Golden Sun takes inspiration from him, above all other trolls. Cave Troll, the second member, refers to trolls' favorite abode. Tolkien also created cave trolls as a subspecies, being green and the cave troll is teal. Brutal Troll simply denotes the trolls especially brutal. But this could be a reference to Tolkien's Super Trolls, the Olag Kai, able to withstand sunlight. 